You're listening to the Parent Pod Podcast by Jimbury Play and Music with Adonica Shaw, a weekly conversation about early childhood development topics for parents with children ages zero to five. While the content of this show is meant to be informative, it is not meant to replace the guidance of your physician, therapist, or pediatrician. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Parent Pod Podcast by Jimbury Play and Music. I'm your host, Adonica Shaw. Today, we're joined by Diane Bowden, who is the voice behind the top-rated podcast, The Minimalist Moms, where she spreads her ideas and interviews with others in regards to living a life in pursuit of less. Her goal is simply think more and do with less. Diane has also been featured on Minimalish Podcast, the Pure Nature Podcast, The 29-Minute Mom, and many others. She was also featured in 614 Magazine in August of 2019, and she lives in Columbus, Ohio. Diane, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being with us. And so I know that I've got this really professional bio um, that talks a little bit about what you've been up to, but why don't you share with our audience a little bit more about yourself, your key values, and the things that really, um, I guess are the most important to you around this concept of minimal living in your day-to-day life? Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, I live in Columbus, Ohio with my three children. I have a five, a two and a half, and a, I guess he's seven months now, seven month old. So I have my hands pretty full, but you ask what my core values are. And I guess in regards to minimalism, it is just to keep things as simple as possible. So whether that's streamlining my calendar or the play dates that we, that we do each week, or just, I guess the roles that I'm taking outside of like the podcast and motherhood, I'm just trying to make those as simple as possible. It's about having fewer things in our home so that I am not bogged down by clutter because I do believe that that contributes to not necessarily anxiety, but just feeling overwhelmed because there's all this stuff that needs to be tidied or cleaned. And I think that when you have the intention of living with fewer things, living with less, that you automatically don't have the burden and weight of what it's like to have too many things and the overwhelm, like I said, that comes with that. So, um, yeah, I think that minimalism, even if you are looking at it as just somewhat of a design concept or decluttering, it really does bleed into so many areas of life once you start um, living that kind of lifestyle. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. And so when you're saying like keeping your clutter clean right, or keeping your home clean and keeping it decluttered, um, I've always wondered, because I am somebody who's very new to the concept of minimalism. And admittedly, you know, I feel like I've got like every single pillow color you can think of and throw pillows and decorative pillows between my living room, my bedroom, my daughter's room. I've always wondered um, in terms of like children, right? And raising them, like if you have a birthday party, do you still allow families to bring other gifts? If you have a play date, do you have different types of foods for the kids to eat? I know some people here, for example, in California that I've met who practice this uh, lifestyle, so to speak, they either have a very restricted or very focused um I guess, uh, menu for their children around play dates, but then also around birthday parties, they will not allow other families to bring gifts. Like instead they will have to donate to a charity or give some type of gift that is approved by the parents. Is that something that, um, you practice in your home and lifestyle? Are there any other examples of how families with young children practice it pretty generally? So I would say that, if you are asking yourself, how do, how many of this do I need to be considered a minimalist? Or how do I have birthday parties look to be considered a minimalist? I think that that kind of misses the point of minimalism. And I would say that minimalism is truly about intentionality. So 
I personally don't believe there is a right or best way to practice. It's about intentionally decreasing, whether it's your possessions or the things on your schedule. And so I would say that you're right. We have so many things as mothers that we're juggling, birthday parties, play dates, our role as individuals. And I think that minimalism allows us to really center ourselves and come back to what we have deemed priority in our life. And I always tell people when you are considering the pursuit of less to pursue a minimalist lifestyle, I always say, don't go into it with the idea of I'm going to be a minimalist as I would be a vegan or I would be a vegetarian or I would adapt this lifestyle. Like really go in and maybe write down what is important to you versus what you are deeming priority and compare the two lists. See if there's any disconnect to what you have been prioritizing versus what's important. I know for me in my own life, one of the things that is very important to me is making sure my children have strong character. And I was looking at what I'd been prioritizing and just like the investment that I've been putting into them as their mother and especially as a stay at home mom. And I was not in line. I was definitely prioritizing my podcast, um, myself, maybe my friendships over that discipline that they might need or that really deep connectivity with them. And so I think that when we can start to, again, look at the what is important to us versus what we're prioritizing, that can really begin that journey of living with less. And it, it's so silly. I don't know another way to describe it other than to use the word journey because it really isn't anywhere that we arrive. It's just really taking value or taking assessment of what you value and then looking at what is taking away your, taking your attention away from that and what you value. That's just amazing. Um, In terms of journeys, where did your journey with this start? Was there a specific life event that um, made you think about how you were living intentionally or not? Was there a friend of yours that introduced this to you? What was the catalyst for you to start your own personal journey with minimalism? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say that my light bulb moment happened and I'm going to be paraphrasing what the, my husband said, cause I honestly don't remember the exact sentence, but we were in my parents' basement when we, I think we had just gotten married or right before um, we got married And we were looking around at all the things in their basement, trying to find something. And my husband said, look at all of these things that are now in boxes that were once your father's hard earned work hours. And I just really do trace all of my, I guess, belief in minimalism back to that moment, because I really started thinking about how I wanted to prioritize experiences over tangible possessions because those things now are in boxes that once were so important to my parents. And not to say that I don't want to generalize and say that those things weren't important at one point in their lives. But for me, I was just like, okay, I would like fewer boxes in my basement one day. And so I just say that that really started getting the ball going and um, seeking out minimalist resources and seeing what experiences would like the value and experiences versus things would look like at that point. So I think I was like 22. I'm almost 32 now. So I've been practicing this for about 10 years. That's tremendous. I think all of us can kind of um, relate, you know, going back to parents' house or an auntie or uncle, and they've got like literally every single trophy picture um, (laughs) memento. And then I remember like, even for myself and not so much, recently, but I remember when my children were really young, like if I'd go on a business trip, I'd always feel like I needed to bring them back knickknacks. So snow globes and um, like all of these little airport airport toys that I'm thinking, oh my God, they're totally going to love this. And they're going to remember this moment that mom always brings them back something. But then inevitably when it came time for spring cleaning or summer cleaning or whatever, I would run into these things and the children, you know, at that point they'd be like, oh, I remember that, but it really wouldn't mean anything to them. And I think for me, um, I started to kind of get more intentional around the types of items I would bring home in general, but in particular from business trips, because a lot of it doesn't always carry the same sentimental value um, for the child or for the people that you have the intended purpose. Like if you're just kind of guilt purchasing to make sure that they knew that you thought about them as something completely different than perhaps having saved that money coming home and then taking them 
to the zoo or taking them um, to do something that might be meaningful or have more value to them in the long term. So for me, I can kind of see in my own life where I've started to kind of narrow down um, what I was bringing into my home in small ways. And so for me at this point, like I would totally need to overhaul um, each room in my house. Do you have any, I guess, tips or hacks for parents who might be interested and at the very least kind of going through their own items or their own house and kind of trimming out the things that may not bring uh, more meaning or more value to the household and that might free up that energetic space, so to speak, for themselves and for their family? Yeah, well, a couple of things. So I think that's great that you are recognizing that in your in your life personally. I think that a lot of people do buy things out of guilt and to show their love. And really what your kids want when you go away on a business trip or on a vacation, they want to see you again. So I, I love that you're doing that. And I always suggest if you are going to bring something home, bring some bring home something that's a consumable so that maybe we can eat something really yummy that you found on your trip. Um, I, I think that that's a great way to bring something tangible home, but also set aside that time, like you said, to take them to the zoo, take them out to get some ice cream or coffee, whatever it is. And maybe talk about how your experience was when you were away and their experience was, and just connect that way. So I love that you did that. And then you asked about where we can start paring down in our homes. And I always suggest that the bathroom is a great place to start. It sounds so silly, but we typically don't have a ton of sentimental items in our bathrooms. It's things that are easy to just either. I know sometimes we have like several bottles of shampoo, shampoo. So merge them all together in one, if you can make sure that you're using them up and then start purging. Um, I say, keep your countertops as clear as possible in the bathroom and just pull things out even for 30 days. So if you have a bunch of knickknacks on your counter, take them all out, give it 30 days and see if you miss them. Like do experiments because this, again, it's not any place that you ever arrive when it comes to minimalism. It's just getting rid of what's superfluous superfluous. I can never say that word, <laughs> but <laughs> I would say you, you can live with so many fewer things than you think. It's just an experiment for you. And I don't want to act as though I completely have it together with minimalism. There are things that I'm constantly still taking, um, consideration of whether it's having too many clothes or too many books. I, I tend to get a lot of books out from the library and, um, I'm trying to like condense that area of my life right now. But yeah, I think that it is just getting rid of the excess. That is what we are striving to do. Oh, so inspiring. I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, I know that I now have you as a guru a, around this concept, even though, you know, you say you don't have it all together. I feel like as, as moms, whether you've got littles or you've got tweens or you've got teenagers or even adults, it's always good to be able to look to another person, another woman, another expert, another person that's trying, you know, um, mm -hmm. to do something with their life that might be a radical shakeup in my own for inspiration. Are there any other... I hate to say gurus, so to speak, or folks that are just really knowledgeable in this area that you kind of follow or you follow maybe their mantra or their value system. Are there any other people that we should be aware of that are really good, strong examples of how to introduce this into our lives? Absolutely. So I want to say before I introduce the book that I want to share, Part of the reason, um, if you were to follow me on Instagram, I don't share a ton of what my own space looks like because I honestly am a big believer. And then in that, when we are comparing our spaces to others, like I said, minimalism is not going to look the same. It's not all about white walls and only having a, a few chairs and only having a few books like categorized by color or alphabetized on your bookshelf. And so I try to stay away from, I guess, sharing my life in that way on Instagram and also following people that, that do that just because I really do want people to make it their own. So I feel like for me personally, I try to give practical tips that are somewhat, you can, you can take them and run with them for yourself. But if I'm looking to someone who I think somewhat does the same, I really love Joshua Becker and he wrote, he has several books, but one that he 
I want to say it's probably his first one, The More of Less by Joshua Becker. Um, it just really is a great foundational book to start your minimalist pursuit. And then he also has one, I believe it's called The Minimalist Home. And he just takes you room through room on how you can declutter. And again, it's more of a foundation as opposed to this is how it should look in your home. He allows you to make those decisions. He allows you to... Um, to just kind of curate your space and li live with less in the way that you that works best for your family because like I said it's just not realistic for all of us to have these perfectly curated homes and kitchen drawers and pantries yeah. and it, it just to me that is really overwhelming and I think I'm doing a really great job in trying to pare down not to toot my own horn and I don't need to compare and make myself feel worse for how bad of a minimalist I'm being does yeah. that make sense no, it totally does. I, um, it's interesting. So I remember watching, uh, Marie Kondo has that documentary that's on Netflix and seeing her go through people's homes with them to kind of determine what should be pared down. And I, I believe her mantra was about deciding whether or not something sparked joy within them to keep it in the home. And I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, like if I really needed to tackle every room in my house or everything in my house in that fashion, I, I wondered for myself personally, how long it would take for me to get through it time-wise. But then also, I would say in terms of her particular philosophy, the emotional part of it of asking each thing, whether or not it should say, I think for some people could, could be a little um, emotionally overwhelming, I would say. And so knowing now that there's another resource to get to dive more into this and one that sounds very much like, and I want to be clear here, like I have never um, read the books that you've mentioned, but, but it sounds like he really allows you to be present and then make some of these decisions for your, for yourself mm -hmm. um, in a way that seems to be very guilt-free, which I feel a lot of our listeners and a lot of, you know, families and moms in general would love um, because there's always that tinge of I'm getting rid of this. What will the reaction be from those around me? Cause we tend to think about the, the feelings of everybody else involved. Now, certainly if you're starting in the bathroom um, with items that don't hold as much sentimental value, that is one thing. But I know for me, for example, whenever it comes to cleaning out my kid's toy chest or the closet, or even just going through like um, old art art work um, that I have stored and I kind of save it by uh, school quarter, so to speak. I have school-age children who are 11 and 8, and then I also have a baby. He's 3. Um, but it's always such a process, particularly if I try to do it while they're home, mm -hmm. because then they are attached to all of these things that they kind of forgot about. <laughs> But then also, um, you know, don't quite understand why they want to keep it or not. And so to know that there's a guilt, we, a guilt free way to kind of look at it, or there's another guru to consider when it comes to deciding what should stay in your home, what should help guide you in terms of what's going to bring meaning to your family sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, so I have just one more question before we, you know, close out this episode of the parent pod. And that is how can people find you? Yeah, well, if they're interested in following along, I am at Minimalist Moms Podcast on Instagram. The website is minimalistmomspodcast.com. And if you're curious about just who I am in the day-to-day, -day, I am at Diane Bowden. But again, that's more just, just pictures of my kids. So um, I try to make it look creative and fun. But yeah, I would say that Minimalist Moms Podcast on Instagram is where I like to hang out. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, like we, we love pictures of kids around here. So <laughs> that's something we welcome at Jim Bree Play and Music. That's very much um, our brand and we love seeing those types of photos. So all of the photos of the kitties, the, the more the merrier. So that's great. Uh, for those of you who are listening, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Parent Pod. More information on our guest, as well as the books that she just told us about will be described in the description box below. And if you have any questions, feel free to go through our website, which is jimboreeclasses.com. 
To learn more about this week's episode or the content discussed in the episode, be sure to follow Jimboree Play and Music on Facebook. 